Hello and welcome to the first, the first Classroom Power Ups vlog session. My name is Adam Powley and I write here at the Classroom Power Ups website. Uh, it is my website and uh, this vlog is going to be about everything that I find game inspiring. Uh, game inspired designs and video games and board games and card games and different things that I can apply to the classroom and hopefully increase engagement. Um, this vlog is going to be a weekly reflection. I'm going to try on every Friday to, to think back on the week and think about at least one thing that went really well that I can share with you. This week what I want to talk about is my battle mechanics, my skirmishes. Now I have a bunch of different kind of battle mechanics and I've had some people ask before how the melee system works, which if you're into things like role-playing games, the melee system is how you can uh, battle enemies using weapons and such. Well, there's a few different things that go into this for me, and my kids, my students, have been really excited about this skirmish system. Skirmishes for me are the way that I replace my quizzes, and I think that the students really enjoy that uh, because I haven't had anybody complain about having to take a quiz yet, and, and we've had one almost every class. Um, now, the quiz for me is data collection, so I'm looking for data collection, and we use different mechanics for this. Now, the first thing that we did is uh, we had the students uh, create avatars, and in this avatar, they each got a superpower. Uh, for example, they might have super speed, right? So they'd get this little card that uh, has their super speed. Now, the super speed is pretty weak. If you see here on the uh, little columns in, this, in the center, a level one, they only get to roll a four-sided die. Now, some of them are a little bit stronger, and they might have super strength. And the super strength avatar type gets to roll a 10-sided die and a 12-sided die. kind of looks like this. And this is my little pop-o-matic. Uh, this is a little five and a half ounce cup with a lid. And instead of having dice fly over the place, shake them up, and then they can see that they rolled a, a five and a six, and that's their attack. Now, the students kind of like this. And... Uh, reflecting back on the week, um, I would say it takes about two, two and a half minutes per question, uh, which is a little bit longer than it would take on a quiz, but I'm getting more buy-in and the students are actually able to um, uh, really put a lot more thought into it. So let's talk about that super strength guy, um, or uh, girl in this case. Uh, I have two different types. We have hunters and sentinels, two kind of big groups in our class, uh, which, by the way, I'm going to talk more about that some other time because it has been working fantastically as a motivator. Um, hunters get these uh, hunter hearts, and if they have a hunter's heart, uh, they uh, if they keep them until they miss an assignment deadline. If they, lose, if they don't turn something in on time, uh, then they lose a heart, kind of like in Zelda. Um, the Sentinels, though, they get charges, so they start another and they power their charge power up, and uh, as long as they get it done before the test, they can uh, earn charges to, uh, to, to use their superpowers. But anyways, back to the, the skirmishes. Uh, the Hunters and the Sentinels are not fighting each other in the skirmishes, they're fighting this uh, other character. So they'll get a character card out of this if uh, they defeat them, and the character cards can be used to uh, join with other powers, they become allies, and uh, they can strengthen different elements of the class. Um, now, it's been a little tricky uh, trying to figure out how strong that uh, other character should be. Um, so there's a squad of three people uh, all battling against the enemy. Then uh, how do I set the, the hit points for that? If you're familiar with uh, role-playing games, hit points are the uh, amount of energy that a, an opponent has, and you take off the uh, hit points with your attack rolls. So that uh, roll of 11 would take 11 points off of the enemy's hit points. So where that starts is pretty important. So I had to figure out a system for determining that. So what I did was have each student in the group figure out their max hit points. So if I had three super strength students, that would be three people that could have a max roll of 22 that comes out to 66. And then because I like randomization and not having it be the same every time, I had them roll a little four-sided die. It looks like a pyramid. And when they roll it, um, they would multiply their max hit point by whatever they rolled. So they might have a fairly easy enemy and only have to get out 66 hit points, or they might have a more difficult one. It could go, uh, man, I can't do math, but let's say up near 200 points. Every time they get an answer correct, then they get to roll their die, and then they take the hit points off. And I have a little so card. The, card. Um, the character card goes here, and let's say they need to get up to 66 
they can just circle it on here. And as they roll their dice, they get a, a six. We're just going to take six points off. And then the next roll, they get another six. They can go to 12. So uh, that keeps track of it there. Um, most of the students have been pretty honest with this. And um, maybe it's the group of kids I have, or maybe it's just that they, they tend to uh, buy into the competition element of it. But they've been really good about being honest about their max hit points and taking off the amount. And there really isn't an, a huge reward outside of just the competition of, of playing against the opponent. Um, in order to collect the data on this, um, I've been using Plickers. This is a Plickers card. Um, you'll see right up here. Maybe you can't. There you go. Uh, if they hold the card up to me like this, the answer is D. Uh, if it's like this, the answer that they want is A. So I have a multiple choice uh, project multiple choice question up on the projector and um, it's uh, you scan it with your phone and it registers through the phone uh, that's plickers p-l-i-c-k-e-r-s uh, dot com and you can go there and check that out um, all right so there's our skirmishes that's been going really well I had uh, two quizzes this this week uh, and they're only five to six questions they take about because we're still getting used to loading up the dice and getting the game ready, uh, that process takes about five or ten minutes. Um, I'm hoping that that's going to chop down to just a couple of minutes when they come in because they'll know their levels, they'll know how to get everything set up. Um, but each question takes about two minutes or so to get the scans in, to get the dice rolled, and then to move on. So uh, it takes about 15, 20 minutes to get through that um, five, six, seven question quiz. Uh, and then I get the data and I can know uh, right on my phone uh, or if you have an iPad, you can use an iPad. Uh, right away, I can tell uh, what I need to go over again and, and what it is that um, uh, they know really well and I don't have to bother teaching anymore. Uh, and over time, I hope you join me and uh, we can talk more about uh, my classroom, my reflections, and hopefully that will inspire you and, and inspire me more uh, as the year goes on. Thanks for joining me. And please hit the subscribe button in the bottom and uh, give me a like if you really like what you saw. And I uh, hope we can join and build this community together. Thanks. See you next week. <laughs>